dear students in today's session let us talk about a topic called current electricity i hope dear students you have studied well for your 12th standard and second pc and you have performed well in the recent exams also and i'm sure that you have understood the basics of ohm's law kirchhoff's law the combination of resistors cells and its combination wheatstone bridge and other related topics and i hope you have understood the concepts of current electricity well if i'm not wrong you have been studying current electricity almost since 13 to 14 months and the introduction to current electricity you would have studied in your school only today in this particular session we will be talking about more of shortcuts to solve the problems of current electricity my approach is very simple to solve a problem of current electricity within 20 seconds current electricity is a major chapter for karnataka cet from this chapter alone you will get at least four question and at most six questions if you look into previous two cet papers you can easily observe that there are more than five questions in each paper so almost current electricity constitutes 10% of karnataka cet syllabus but remember for solving these five questions you must not take more than 2 minutes for all five questions maximum time that you should spend is 2 minutes remember this dear students you should complete your karnataka cet paper within 20 minutes that should be your aim and of course 20 minutes with all perfect answers now let us talk about few important shortcuts in current electricity which you have not studied in your school maybe you can call it as college also dear students you should be knowing this if two resistors are connected in series their equivalent resistance is r1 plus r2 if they are connected in parallel their equivalent resistance is r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 this is a familiar concept to you remember if two resistors are connected in series the equivalent resistance is r1 plus r2 for the time being assume r1 is less than r2 then r equivalent is greater than r2 this you should have studied it's a matter of common sense dear student sum of two numbers is always greater than the greatest among the two 1 plus 3 is definitely greater than 3 so if r1 and r2 are the two resistors connected in series their equivalent is greater than the greatest this you should have studied in your school but the shortcut and an important logic here is less than or equal to twice of the greatest very 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 important logic if two resistors are connected in series the equivalent resistance is greater than the biggest and lesser than or equal to twice of the greatest similarly if two resistors are connected in parallel equivalent resistance is given by r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 and assuming r1 is less than r2 r equivalent is definitely lesser than r1 this also you should have studied in the school but greater than or equal to r1 by 2 this is another important logic better you can make a note of this while i am explaining it on the board look at this dear students consider this is r1 first resistance this is r2 second resistance r equivalent is given by r equivalent is given by r1 plus r2 so assume r1 is less than r2 r equivalent is definitely greater than r2 this you should have studied in your school is that correct and very importantly dear student r equivalent r equivalent is greater than r2 and less than or equal to 2 r2 very very important logic this is if two resistors are connected in parallel then equivalent r1 is first resistor r2 is second resistor right so what is r equivalent dear student r equivalent is equal to r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 for the time being assume r1 is less than r2 assume r1 is less than r2 now r equivalent is definitely r if equivalent is definitely less than r1 that is always greater than or equal to r1 by 2 this is an important logic dear student that you must know right this is about the first important shortcut that you should know 
please make a note of this we'll discuss few more shortcuts dear students you have understood the logic of series and parallel circuit but how to find out the exact value using shortcuts look at this dear students consider a resistance let us say 10 ohm consider one more resistance let us say 40 then i will say the equivalent is equal to 8 ohm how can you say that it's very very simple dear students just look at this which is the biggest among the two? Biggest among the two is 40. Write that. How many times 10 is 40? Do you agree with me? It is 4 times. Correct? Write 4. I repeat. How many times 10 is 40? 4 times. To that add 1. Right? 40 by 5. Do you agree with me? 40 by 5 is equal to 8 ohm. See how simple the logic is. We are not using the formula R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Straight away, I am writing the answer. Now, let us take one more part. Let us see, this is 2 ohm. And consider another one, that is 18 ohm. What is the equivalent? It's very simple. Write the biggest among the two, that is 18, divided by how many times 2 is 18? 9 times. To that add 1, you will get 10. So, the equivalent is 1.8 ohm. See how simple it is. Often, we will be using this particular shortcut dear students. And always remember, did not have to tell you, if this is I1 and this is I2, if this is I1, assuming this as I, this is I2, always remember, I2 is less than I1, that you should know. And here also, if you call this as I3 and this as I4, and assuming this as I dash, so always I4 is less than I2. Lesser the resistance, there will be more current. Another important logic. See here, I3 is I3 is greater than I4 or I4 is less than I3. I3 is greater than I4 and also here in this case, I1 is greater than I2. I1 is greater than I2. These are the two important things that you should know. And of course, that you should have studied in your school also. Always remember this, dear students, if two resistors are connected in parallel, always there will be more current in a lesser resistance path. What is the reason for this? That you should have studied in your Ohm's law. Right? Anyway, so I hope you have understood this. Now, Ohm's law, the properties of Ohm's law, the conditions for Ohm's law, that and all, you should have, you should have studied. And Wheatstone Bridge also, I hope you are familiar with that. And very importantly, I hope you know the basics of Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff voltage law. And voltage divider rule and current divider rule are the two important rules that you should understand. But here, instead of using such rules, let us use basic mathematical logic which you should have studied in 5th or 6th standard that is ratio and proportion concept and try to understand current divider rule and voltage divider rule. Got it? Anyway, before that, you please make a note of this. Let us talk about voltage divider rule and current divider rule. Look at this dear students. Consider you have 1 ohm resistance, another one is 4 ohm resistance. Assume that you have 20 volts voltage source. If you are asked to find out, assuming 0 ohm is the internal resistance. If you are asked to find out V2 and V1, generally what you used to do? If you observe carefully, generally what we were doing is, we were finding out 
total resistance, then total current. After finding out total current, we have to find out V2 as I into 4 ohm. No, do not do that. You have a very simple logic, dear students. You have a very simple logic, dear students. Can you divide 20 in the ratio 1 is to 4? Let us write V1 is equal to. Can you divide 20 in the ratio 1 is to 4? V1 is equal to 20 times. 20 times. What is the ratio? 1 is to 4. 20 into 1 divided by 1 plus 4. That is V1. 20 into 1 divided by 1 plus 4. That is 20 by 5. That is equal to 4 volt. Right? And what about V2? Either you have to use 20 into 4 divided by 1 plus 4 or that is 20 minus 4 that is equal to 16 volt. See how simple it is. It is just a division of the 20 in the ratio 1 is to 4. You have 1 ohm and 4 ohm. Suppose even if you have 100 ohm and 400 ohm also the ratio would be 4 is to 16 only. Got it dear student? This is an important logic. So, this is for voltage divider rule. Suppose you are asked to divide the current, how to do it? 